fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Stein, and it is time for update sneak peek number one. I'll be doing Lola sneak peek, the Lola Olympics, in a future video, so make sure you guys subscribe for that. In this video, we're talking balance changes, pins, a ton of other stuff. Check out this new brawloween loading screen. Very spooky. Ash's first star power is getting a significant buff. Before the update, having his ammo charged would actually result in his rage going up twice as fast. After the update, it will go up three times as fast, which means that he's actually able to reach his first rage level with just one hit. Additionally, the amount of rage that Ash gets from taking damage is getting reduced. He used to fully charge his rage from taking just 5,000 damage, and now it will require 8.4 thousand damage for his rage to fully charge, and that's assuming he's taking constant damage or constantly attacking so the rage doesn't start to decrease. You can actually see the comparison right here, and Supercell let us know that Ash has been in a pretty good place, but they wanted to make these changes that there would be a little bit more reason to use his first star power instead of his second one. And this should also require Ash to be a bit more careful with his health so that he can effectively charge his rage. Frank is actually getting a nerf to both of his gadgets. But first, this video is sponsored by in case who makes my favorite backpack of all time. <laughs> and whenever I go on a family trip, it is my responsibility to pack all the electronics for myself, my wife, and my two daughters. I don't know why it's my responsibility, but it is. And my Icon backpack from Incase has so much storage in it. It's actually insane, and it is definitely my favorite backpack to use. And I've had a lot of backpacks in my life. This is my favorite. I can fit my laptop, my tablet, my daughter's tablet, a switch, some over-ear headphones, some earbuds, enough charging bricks to power it all. And after it's full, the backpack still look super clean. Whether you're a student looking for an everyday use bag, or a photographer looking to protect your precious equipment, or you just want to get a quality backpack, Incase has a bag for you. You can check out Incase and all of their different bags using the link in the description below, and make sure you guys use code TRIBE for 20% off of any purchase you make. And just in case you're looking for a quality bag, Incase has got your back. Back. His irresistible attraction gadget is now going to double the damage of his next attack, along with pulling enemies toward him. That means that he'll be able to deal 3,472 damage, which is enough to one-hit kill low HP brawlers like Crow, Barley, or Tick. That's actually really insane if you think about it. Now, additionally, Frank's active noise cancellation gadget is now going to be immune against El Primo's suplex supplement gadget. Now, to the El Primo, it will just say that there aren't any targets close by, but once the noise cancellation wears off, it will work again and and Frank will still get yeeted. Frank's kind of in a tough spot for a while, so hopefully this is gonna make him a little bit better, especially with his second gadget. Griff is getting a buff to his business resilience star power. With this equipped, he used to heal 7% of his missing health every two seconds, and that healing is increasing to 10% of his missing health every two seconds. This will make his second star power better, but I honestly don't think that it's nearly good enough to justify switching off of his first star power, because his first one's just so good. With that said, I've been wrong about star power buffs like this in the past, so we'll see if this actually changes anything. Meg is actually getting a much needed improvement. When her robot gets destroyed, she will now have one ammo loaded to help her deal with very low HP brawlers. I think this is actually the perfect way to make her feel a little bit more reliable once her boss gets destroyed. Now, Jackie is getting three changes. First of all, they're removing the shield from her super, but to make up for it, she's actually getting an 8% buff to her HP. At max level, she's going from 6,440 health to 7,000 health. And that additional 560 HP is actually pretty significant, but that's not the only significant buff she's getting. Her supercharge rate is also getting a buff. Instead of requiring five hits to charge, it will now charge in four hits, which means that she'll have her super up 20% more often. And I think that Jackie's gonna feel a lot better with these changes, and she might actually be a competitive option. Now, Mortis's creepy harvest is getting a 22% nerf to its healing. The healing that he gets from getting kills is reducing from 1,800 to 1,400 health healed per kill. Supercell let us know that they think that this will make Coiled Snake a better option out of the two, but honestly, I still prefer Creepy Harvest much more, and it's probably going to be my go-to star power unless it gets nerfed even more. Brock is getting a significant nerf to his projectile speed. His rockets are going to be 11% slower, and you can see what it looks like right here in this comparison. Honestly, I don't know how how big this change will actually be to Brock because he still covers a large area, but it will definitely make it harder to land his shots and will give enemies a 
bit more time to reactively dodge them. Many of you will be happy, and many of you will be sad that Leon's lollipop drop gadget is getting nerfed. Its health is now going to decay over a 20 second duration, just like Bo's totem gadget does. This will make it easier for enemies to get rid of it, and even if it's in a hard spot to reach them, they'll only have to worry about it for about 20 seconds at a time. I still think the gadget's going to be pretty useful with three uses, because it can be up for an entire 60 seconds if the enemy team doesn't get rid of it, and that's more than half of the time for most matches in Brawl Stars but it definitely won't be as strong as it used to be. Now, this isn't really a balance change, but it is now possible to see during the match if a player owns a gadget. If they do, there will be a little gadget icon at the bottom of the player circle, and the color of the circle will actually correspond with which team they're on. Up next are all of the skins coming with this update, plus their gem costs. Starting off is the B800 Bull skin, available at Tier 1 of the Season 9 Brawl Pass. For his attack, it looks like he fires a cluster of short-range rockets, I think, and he gains a cybernetic-looking shield with his super. Unfortunately, I don't think the shield actually shields him for anything, but it looks cool. Now, when he loses, his cyborg self attacks him, which is kind of creepy, and this is what it looks like when he wins. By the way, Chola is the other skin in the Brawl Pass, but I won't actually be able to show this skin off until my Lola sneak peek. Now, next is Director Buzz, who will be unlocked from the Power League season, plus 25,000 star points. By the way, the old requirement to get the Power League skin was to get 30 straight wins. Wins from entire matches. Well, each match is made up of two or three rounds. In the new update, it will require 60 rounds won. So you'll actually get credit for the rounds that you win, even if you lose the match. Just gotta say, I really appreciate Super Cell listening to our feedback on that that is that's that's awesome i'm happy with power league skin rewards now for his attack he snaps down on his enemies with a director's clapperboard and he uses old movie reel to pull him to enemies for his super he throws a big fit when he loses as you can see right here and this is his winning animation Headless Rider Stu is going to cost 149 gems. Now, Headless Rider Stu is a Brawloween skin, which means that you'll only be able to buy him for a limited time only. He's got a pumpkin for a head and a sick looking cape on his back. And for his attack, he throws a fiery green axe at his enemies. And for a super, he actually leaves a trail of green fire on the ground, which honestly looks really sick. He loses his head when he loses. And he has a super cool winning animation, if you ask me. Now, Swamp Jean is another Brawloween skin and will cost 79 gems. For his attack, he fires swamp eggs that actually burst out into swampy tadpoles, which is kind of gross and also kind of cool. And for his super, he fires a giant swamp fish that pulls enemies back to him. His little swamp friend knocks him out and he sinks whenever he loses. And when he wins, he creepily rises from the depths, which is funny. Now, Count Pangula is another Brawloween skin and will cost 79 gems. He's a spooky version of himself and wields a coffin instead of a suitcase. For his attack, he throws coffins at enemies, which actually looks pretty cool. And for his super, his little porters are vampires, which attack with little bat projectiles, which also looks really cool. Now, when he loses, his coffin tries to eat him, and it happens successfully. And when he wins, he rises from the dead, which is actually pretty cool. Ghost Squeak is the final Brawloween skin and will cost 49 gems, and this skin honestly provides a ton of value for 49 gems. He throws spooky ghost bombs at his enemies, which actually look really cool, and then for his super, he throws a lantern on his back, which explodes into other little ghosts. He gets dragged back to the ground when he loses, and this is what he does when he wins. Once again, I think this skin is an awesome value for 49 gems. Captain Crow is going to cost 79 gems. He's put on a superhero costume, very likely for a movie filmed in Brawlywood. And for both of his attack and his super, his daggers are replaced with spinning knives that actually look pretty cool. Whenever he loses, he tries to fly away, but he fails, which is actually funny. And then when he wins, I think he's like looking for evil in the skies, then he jumps up and throws daggers on the ground, which is cool. You can tell that my opinion of all these skins is either that they're cool, funny, or awesome. <laughs> Squeakbuster Gale is going to cost 149 gems, and for whatever reason, he's equipped himself with a bunch of gear to take out enemy squeaks, right? Anti-squeak gear. How does he fight against them? He fires ghosts at them with his attack, and with his super, he actually summons, I guess, like a giant ghost that scares enemies away. Really blows them away, but, you know, we can pretend they're afraid. And he gets spooked by a squeak ghost when he loses, and this is what his winning animation looks like. 
Now, Kong Surge is going to cost 79 gems. You could say he's gone bananas with his giant banana sword, and he's ready to destroy some buildings. In fact, for his attack, he throws rocks at enemies, and whenever he supers, he literally jumps onto and destroys buildings, and you'll actually notice little flying helicopters around him also like the movies. Now, he progressively becomes more monstrous as he upgrades, which is a really nice touch, and this is his losing animation, but it kind of looks bugged to me, so I think it actually might be a work in progress, as things typically are when Whenever I'm filming sneak peeks for updates. Then we have this as his winning animation, and don't ask me why that banana gets so big. Up next is Cat Burglar Jesse, and this skin will be available for free during the World Finals. We'll get more information on exactly how that will work in November, and I'm actually not certain if she will cost gems and be available for purchase if you do miss the World Finals. With this skin, Jesse's attacks actually look really cool. I don't know exactly what they are, but they kind of remind me of like black holes, and her turret becomes a cat turret, which also fires little mini black holes. When she loses, it's clear that she failed the heist, and it's actually really funny. And then when she wins, this is what she looks like. She successfully steals the trophy with her magnetic shock rifle. Then we have Jesse's remodel. Both she and her turret, Scrappy, have gotten a significant upgrade. However, I should mention that her other skins actually won't be upgraded until a future update. Her attack projectiles are still the same, but she does look a lot cleaner now, and this is actually what she looks like when she loses now. It's, it's kind of sad and adorable at the same time. And this is her winning animation. Also coming in the update are the true gold and true silver skins for BB, Carl, Amber, Colette, and Dynamite. Also, in case you're curious, the other Brawloween skins will become available this Brawl Day season as well. So if you don't have Werewolf Leon, now's your chance. Now for Brawloween, and probably until whenever the next update lands, we are going to have a special new Peekaboo event modifier available for a while. Each day will take place in a different game mode, and every seven seconds, all Brawlers will go invisible for seven seconds. Just for reference, that's actually just as long as Leon goes invisible with his super, so it's going to be just like that. You're going to know where your teammates are, but you won't know where the enemy is unless they're attacking, taking damage, or they're right next to you. So pretty much it's like a bunch of Leons using their super every seven seconds, and you're not going to know where anybody is, which is hilarious. And I can't wait to see what this is going to be like, especially against real players, because let's be honest, these bots aren't that great. I probably should have died a, died a few times, and I didn't, so. Now, there will also be a special Brawloween 9-win challenge. I know it says 3 wins right here, but it's actually going to be 9 wins, and you will have 4 lives to win, plus you can buy extra ones if you need, and you will want to win, because if you do get all 9 wins, you'll get this exclusive pin as well. And speaking of pins, tons of pins are getting animated for Born Bad Buzz, Brawloween pins, Retropolis pins, and a few others. This is all I actually have to show you in this update sneak peek, so I'm going to show you the rest of the pins as I end this video, and those that want to stick around to see them all, if you need to, can stick around. Thanks a ton for watching this video. You'll want to subscribe for my Lola Olympics video coming out as soon as Supercell lets me release it. And if you plan on buying any of the skins this update or the Brawl Pass, which is the best way for you to spend gems in the game, I would really appreciate you guys using code Kairos in the Brawl Star shop to support my family and the development of future videos. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.